Hello potential viewers, welcome to my channel. So I committed the new age shameful act of paying some attention to internet drama, specifically YouTube drama. And I did notice the news of the short lasting feud between YouTuber Itza Gundam and one of the biggest Twitch streamers now, namely Pokimane. Now, I believe most of what could be reported has already been reported by different people covering this drama already. So I will cut to the chase for those of you who are not familiar with it, assuming that if you did not know about it, you would be lacking interest in the details. YouTuber It's a Gundam received some screen caps from Twitter the other day, showing some self-proclaimed fans of Pokimane professing their love for her and saying that they donated a large portion of their savings just to please her. It's a Gundam made a video mocking these fans as simps and taking some shots at Pokimane. Then Pokimane got butthurt and started reacting to this video on one of her live streams, stating that some of the screen caps are from parody accounts and they are not real. Then she did something that got the attention of many. She clicked on It's a Gundam's video sponsor link and started blasting the video's sponsor, Rich Wallet, and vowed she would never accept Rich Wallet as a sponsor. So to summarize what was so wrong to many people regarding this situation is that in the age of internet drama and people's livelihood being dependent on sponsors and brand deals, it is generally and properly despised for anyone who engages in internet drama to attack another person's means to make a living. And there are many reasons to this kind of sentiment. One of the most obvious is the general and societal distaste for people who meddle with other people's livelihood. As long as their means of making a living are in general relatively honest and non-criminal. And it is not only in the modern and western world. In China, there is an old saying, 断人财路, fumu, which translates to, to cut off one's stream of revenue is like to murder their parents. If you still remember the internet heat from past few weeks ago, the reaction YouTuber Suzy Liu was under fire for allegedly abusing the copyright system to silence her critics and even people who are just generally making fun of her. Just in case you didn't know about the way YouTube ecosystem work. This is similar to but more serious than attacking another YouTuber's livelihood. As I said, perhaps most of you would agree. This is a despised behavior and justifiably so. But I do not want to dive too much into the morals of this kind of behavior. That could take another super long video. However, I would like to dive into a sliver of the slowly arising phenomenon that is the new norm of celebrity culture and how it may be detrimental to the current day celebrity culture itself. This new norm has been made especially obvious when we have a pandemic going on, where traditional celebrities New age internet celebrities and some celebrities that are somewhat in between are forced to retreat to their own personal space and without a lot of the day-to-day -day personal branding assistance. For once in the history of celebrities, media celebrities backed by big corporations are on a relatively same level as the new age internet celebrities. The norm that I am referring to is the more and more direct interaction between celebrities and their fan base mimicking a kind of pseudo-personal connection, friendship or even romantic relationship, or the manufactured appearance of it. If you think about it, the relationship between an internet celebrity and their fan base and followers, though relatively new in this age, is at its core a much simpler model of what the celebrity business model has always been about. Individuals with entertainment talent are propped up by a combination of factors like corporate opportunism, brand value in particular markets, and popularity of products. And these individuals become brands that have marketing value and in turn helps to sell entertainment products to help manufacture it. And people involved in this cycle of branding, marketing, production make profit from it. The legacy media sphere and the entertainment industry behind the legacy celebrity culture were original constructs of an age where limited options for information sharing were available. Thus, legacy celebrities are usually tied to big corporations that either own entertainment media vendors or have close ties to them. This brought about one or several layers of middlemen between individual celebrities and their fan base and give these corporations a lot of power in shaping the public images of these celebrities. 
and with majority of the corporations having started from several de decades ago, it is not hard to imagine that their strategy of branding the old age legacy celebrities revolve around some sense of purity and obscurity where the celebrities are made distance to the fans and followers with relatively limited or even no direct interaction with them. These celebrities are not only themselves, but also constructs of branding and marketing products. They need to be in most cases inoffensively marketable to have as wide an appeal as possible, and their personalities are shown only if they are complementary to their manufactured image. As with the continuous development of the entertainment industry as well as information technology, the market becomes more saturated with celebrities with relatively similar talents and images. And like many industries, when the market becomes saturated and thus more competitive, the next steps forward will be to discover more and monetize niche markets as well as unique branding. This is where, in my humble opinion, celebrities that are in the legacy entertainment industry with a bit more personality crooks started to appear more often and started gaining popularity. Celebrities with nicely polished images are nice and all, but unless they have some absolutely unique or sophisticated talent that can make the average Joe and Jane feel disconnected or attract only super mature fans that are interested in their art only, the appeal of these kinds of image will start to fade fairly early. And in a lot of cases, a celebrity with an amazing talent and a not overly polished and sometimes cruelly and down-to-earth image can be really effective in attracting fans and followers. Emma Stone, Jennifer Lawrence, and Cardi B comes to mind. The younger the legacy celebrities are, the more likely they are active on social media. And since politics has become part of the marketing scheme, it is pretty common or even ma mandatory for the celebrities to have takes in politics and champion left-wing progressive causes. But this is probably as far as the legacy entertainment industry and the legacy celebrities in the music industry in Hollywood are willing to go. Over the years of them effectually monopolizing the entertainment industry and institutionalize the whole system of star making, if you take a look at even the most close to fans and down to earth legacy celebrities, their engagement with the fans are purely non-commercial. The transferring of money to the celebrity in support for the art still has to go through the same middleman. Thus, the general marketing strategies and their interaction with their fan base will still have a smell of old school business, even though you can always have a more and more down to earth marketing. And with the corporation's hands around the marketing and monetization, there will be the struggle over control, as well as artistic gatekeeping and even ugly politics that oftentimes stifles the creation of good art. Then there is the new age celebrities, namely internet celebrities that rose to fame on internet platforms like Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch, and even adult websites like Pornhub and OnlyFans. And in the case of these kinds of celebrities, they are to some level despised by the legacy entertainment industries and their participants, and with some admittedly legitimate reasons. Because for most of the new celebrities that have risen through the internet, the lack of fine art appeal and polish are almost their inherent feature, i.e. the duct tape production feel and the real life feel without the studio and corporation formulae touch. With the invention of direct money wiring services like PayPal and Venmo, as well as the technological advancements that made spontaneous live streaming via the internet possible, the internet celebrities can easily put on a show that reaches thousands of audiences members and engage with their fan base directly, while monetizing their performance with only their platform and payment processors as the middleman. This, of course, has its perks and drawbacks. The perks will be almost no content gating besides the TOS of the platforms and relatively free scheduling, although it is preferred by the market to have a schedule, and a general sense of genuine connection with the fan base, which will allow the generation of more diverse content. But the drawback will be that content marketing will become a burden on those internet celebrities alone and lacking of a centralized consistent strategy. This will leave room for different gaps and oopsies and make them vulnerable to media backlash. It is also notable that the fights and feuds between individual internet celebrities will appear more ugly or underhanded, just like the actions of Pokimane and Susie Lu in silencing their critics due to them not having 
corporations in the background gating these kinds of actions and their general lack of other means of retaliation. For legacy celebrities, they can always resort to expensive diss tracks, refusal to work on similar projects to bash each other with clout, and of course, paying off media and paparazzi to expose dirty laundry. Though being cringy as hell, Madonna's Milk Bath It's a Great Equalizer video does have a point. In the current stage of the ongoing pandemic, the legacy celebrities have become largely separated from the corporations and enterprises that are responsible for the crafting and maintaining of their public image, effectively dragging them down to the same level as the internet celebrities. And I suspect this is sort of the reason why the cursed Imagine song was made. It is an attempt from a group of legacy celebrities to re reaffirm their relevance, as they usually do in the pre-pandemic era, but without the help of coordinated press and PR. But they are relatively new to the game and therefore making the mistake of making the message more about themselves and not about the supposed image itself. Ergo, the wildly out-of-touch feeling that is overflowing the screen. Aside from the differences that I just talked about, there are a lot of similarities between the legacy celebrities and the internet celebrities. The most notable of which, I believe, is that the selling of illusions and fantasies, which is probably the most talked about as well, with the common news of fans being upset over a sex symbol finding a partner, and even to the extent of Japanese idol groups, where group members are just publicly fantasy girlfriends of their young male fans and are forbidden from having romantic relationships, and internet simps fantasizing about quote-unquote Twitch thoughts and dropping their subscription in the minute these thoughts publicize that they have boyfriends. As I said earlier, there is already a trend in the legacy entertainment and media industry that they would be marketing new celebrities in a manner that is similar to the internet celebrities. And as I also said earlier, that there is a limit on where the legacy entertainment industry is willing to go. And this is where, in my humble opinion, the new age internet celebrity culture and legacy celebrity culture will start to eat each other and proceed to forge a new norm of celebrity culture. This process is slow, but it's definitely much faster and much more thorough than how previous technological innovations revolutionized the entertainment industry as a whole. If you think about it, what advantages do Hollywood and the music industry have over individual internet celebrities? The answer is rich technology and marketing and branding resources. The former is getting cheaper and more accessible by the day. You can already shoot close to movie grade videos using affordable civilian cameras and the advancement in video rendering engines has made special effects easier to make than before. The latter is also being chipped away by the development of new marketing strategies like SEO and rise of media licensing firms that connects individual celebrities and their content to larger media vendors. So it is my belief that the future of the celebrity culture will be more of a forest version of what we are seeing today, and the big legacy entertainment companies will become glorified content licensing firms with opt-in perks like management and product branding helps that can be sold to and utilized by individual internet celebrities. There will be crossover projects between these internet celebrities and more independent media content will be pumped out and possibly rivaling some of the big media projects of today. While it is still imaginable that unique and special talent might still be mostly harnessed by the legacy entertainment industry, since the legacy entertainment industry still has most of the knowledge and experience in crafting and polishing phenomenal stars. The absolute majority of the celebrities are nowhere near that level and can easily be replaced by internet celebrities if not for the corporate press constantly maintaining their relevance. But in many ways, should this future to happen, the current legacy entertainment industry will have to face the fact that they are going to lose a lot of their control over the celebrities. And the celebrities are going to have to face the fact that they're in many ways not that much better than average internet figures without their heavy corporate backing. This also indicates that the groups that are largely responsible for the current celebrity culture, namely the entertainment enterprises, the legacy entertainment media and the legacy celebrities themselves will have to face the shifts in paradigm of the current celebrity culture. More road to fame and stardom has become available and legacy roadmaps will have less and less applicability, and the main composition 
of the celebrity culture will likely become just a heterogeneous set of subcultures with areas of overlap, rather than a homogeneous mainstream with only a few branches. That will be all for my video today. I hope you like it. I hope to see you next time.